So, uh, welcome to the most anyhow CSS grid workshop you'll ever attend in your life. Um, how many people have actually used CSS grid before? Sort of. But you've heard of CSS grid. Uh, Flexbox, have you all used before? Okay. So, how do you all feel when you all use Flexbox? Like, is it very confusing to move from like floats to Flexbox? Was it, was it very confusing? That's good, because Flexbox and Grid are similar, not the same because they are used for uh, different purposes. But if you're familiar with Flexbox, um, Grid shouldn't be that hard to understand. So this workshop is going to assume that you have a reasonably good grasp of CSS and how to handle specificity and the cascade. So all that, I'm not going to cover. I'm just going to assume you already know all this. Um, if you happen to be a bit more novice on the CSS front, uh, the pace might be a little fast, but I, uh, you can ask the nice people wearing the blue t-shirts for help, I suppose. Um, so, actually at the end of the day, right, there's no one right way to do layout. So there, there will be cases where um, it's, you would still want to use floats. There will be cases where you still want to use even the oldest, um, the, like all the inline block or even position absolute there will always be use cases for those so don't don't assume that oh now that there is css grid i must use css grid for everything no there's context is everything you really need to examine the use case that applies to you so i just want you all to keep keep this in mind so you, you don't think of css grid as a replacement for anything it's an addition to what you already know right so um if you all could navigate to this uh, do you, all of you get the Wi-Fi? Because it's, it's Shangri-La, it's very fast, no password needed. So everybody has Wi-Fi, right? Yes. Great. So, um, yeah, can you navigate to here? You, there, there's a, a bunch of starter files that I prepared. So, like, if you want to write your own markup, that's great. But the, in these starter files, the markup is written for you. So most of the, the code you'll be writing is just CSS. And if you have any trouble downloading, just let me know. Do, do, uh, can, can, can you all see? Is this a horrible font? Sorry guys. <laughs> can I zoom? I cannot zoom because this is JavaScript. <laughs> can't use review. Uh, KNDW6O. That's an O, not a zero. Does that work? I won't, wait, let me click myself and see. Oh shit! <laughs> um, oh, never mind, got alternative. Wait, five seconds. Uh, okay, one minute. I foresaw this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where's my cursor? Okay, everybody. I love having a Chinese name. Anyway. La 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 la. Well, I got a plus one. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I'm just trying to find you out right away, huh? No, no, boogie. Oh my god, we can hear everything happening next door. Zai <laughs> Zai. Wow, 
Wow, this is a terrible URL. Uh, wait, let me shorten it. Wow, I cannot see here. Oh, you're, do you're doing something. <laughs> Any how Lee? Quick. Bro, bro, I cannot see. If I bring up the computer, it will wash out. It will wash out. Definitely, it will wash out. Try. Swash. Yeah, this is good. Oh, no. Unless we're going to adjust the resolution to 10 to 4, 7, 6, 8. Four, Why can I? Yeah, because this one now you're using is 69, right? It's 82. Mm. Yeah, I think you should adjust it to 10 to 4, 7, 6, 8. Mm. Ah, okay. Um, in the, while he's doing all this, right, it, the URL is uh, bit.ly anyhowly dash grid. Then you press download. Uh, we can, uh, wait, 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 wait. Da, 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 da. Font size. 200%, maybe, I don't know. And then there will be a download button, so you scroll down a bit, scroll down a bit. That's like here. Hopefully this will download as it found. Ding, ding, ding. Does it work? Question mark. Sui. Okay, moving on. Okay, uh, I'll be talking for about 10 minutes first. So if you all still haven't downloaded, like go figure out how to download it and just listen to me in the background. The, okay, so does everybody have Nightly? Actually, I just realized that even if you don't have Nightly, Firefox is fine. So everybody has a copy of Firefox, right? So ideally, you, uh, you run all the code and whatever using Firefox. There's a reason for this. Specifically, um, the Firefox dev tools will have a grid inspector that none of the other browsers have. So I will, I will demonstrate this later, but so just make sure you have a copy of Firefox. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be nightly anymore, but it'd be nice if it's nightly because um, there are a bit more features in the nightly edition. Uh, any text editor will do. There's no NPM, no setup, no nothing. So the starter files, you just load it into your, into your browser, it'll be fine. You just have to keep refreshing. Paper and pencil are in front of you for a reason. We'll explain as I go through the examples at, uh, like at the back. So before I start, right, it's a bit of a story time. Um, has anybody worked in an agency before? Advertising agency? Nobody? Really? Oh, you all have good life, man. <laughs> Let me explain. Uh, I used to work in an advertising agency and in agency as my first two jobs. So a lot of times, especially in Singapore specifically, right, um, we are not that digital yet, agencies in general. So a lot of the times the designers usually come from print backgrounds. And it's great. A lot, they are, they're really very talented. You see those really nice banner ads 
or, or things at the side of the lorries, the very, very nice design ones. Uh, my designers came from that type of background. They're really good at Photoshop, really good at Illustrator, that sort of thing. But one thing about these sort of designs is that they're all static, right? They don't really translate very well on the web. And when the agencies try to move towards digital because it's like the in thing to do, right? They, they will get clients that would say, okay, um, I need a, 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 a website or whatever. And you know, oh, let's, there's this thing called responsive. It sounds good, we want that. So I'm like, okay, fine. And my, the designers who are not familiar with the web in general, they would like, oh, oh, that responsive means uh, I give you one big one and one little one, right? So they'll give you a, a large so-called desktop design and then they'll give you a, a mobile design and you realize that you can't actually responsify them because the elements are all over the place. Like they, they don't understand that in order to make something quote-unquote responsive, right, the markup actually matters because a, a static medium like Photoshop or, or Sketch or even just drawing on pencil and paper, you manipulate it directly. So it means I can, oh, if I want something on the left, it's on the left. If I want something on the right, it's on the right. But, but when it comes to web design, it doesn't work that way. And there's this, this mental model that they, 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 before anybody explained to them, they didn't really get. So you get into a lot of arguments with them, like this cannot be built, like... Actually not, it's a really very nice design, it just was very hard to build on the web. So, I feel that this lack of understanding of how the browser works was the root of all problems. So what I want to do is I'm going to just explain as briefly as I can how a browser renders elements on the page. If you already know this, then I don't know, go browse Facebook or something. Um, so these graphics you see right here right, are by um, this lady called Lynn Clark. She works at Mozilla and she does something called Code Cartoons. And she manages to explain a lot of computer science concepts, not just for browsers, but computer science concepts using cartoons. It's really great. So eventually I'm going to share these slides. And oh, you can see them. They're not cut off. Lah. Later I'll share with you all. But um, you all should just go and like, see her stuff. It's really very, very accessible. So what a browser rendering engine does is, right? Because HTML and CSS, even though some people might disagree, are actually human readable code. Like humans can read HTML and CSS, but your browser cannot. Your browser cannot read all these letters and numbers. You, they have to read bytecode, right? So what the browser does is it will um, pass the HTML and CSS into something that a browser can understand. Then the browser will read, turn them into pixels on the screen. So. When the browser first receives uh, HTML and CSS files, right, they will sort of pass each of these uh, tags into objects that the browser can understand. So at this point in the rendering process, the DOM knows about how the page is structured and all the parent-child relationships, but it, it just doesn't know how these elements should look like. So that's the first step. So after that, it gets to the style, the style portion of the work whereby the browser will then figure out, you know, after everything is passed, the browser will figure out how the elements will look like based on the CSS. And at this point, the layout engine will sort of try to figure out the dimensions, which is the sizing for each of the elements and where exactly on the page they need to go. So this is, this is if you think about it, right, when the browser first receives the HTML, it actually doesn't know the size of all the it doesn't know all the si sizing of all the elements. There. It just knows that they are there. So I think that's the that's the part where non-technical people don't understand because they, they think that okay, I really designed it to be this size. It should be this size. But actually, no. There's a process for the browser to calculate how these things actually should be. So after that, there are a bit, there are two more processes. You get to the pane where the browser will paint the different boxes on the screen. And this can occur on multiple layers. So it's a bit like animation where you, where if you draw and you flip things. So all this, the painting happens in different boxes. And sometimes it can be overlap. It can be multi-layers. So you can actually change, from a performance standpoint, you can actually change one layer with the, without having to repaint things on the other layer. So things like z-index, sometimes this happens. Um, and finally, lastly, there's a composite and render step. 
So all these different layers that were painted, they will be rendered into one image before it's rendered on the screen. So before you actually see something in your browser, it goes through a lot of steps. It's just reasonably fast that you can't really tell. There's a reason why whenever you do animation, we always say, oh, there are certain things that you can animate and certain things you shouldn't animate. Because if you animate the layout properties like the top, bottom, left, right, right, you are affecting it at the third step. So you're forcing the browser to go back to the third step, recalculate everybody's layout, repaint, recomposite. But if you use properties like uh, CSS transforms and opacity, it only hits the last step. So that's why it's more performant if you only animate transforms and opacity, because you don't re-trigger the whole layout paint step. So this is just uh, from a performance standpoint. So this is ex basically how a, a, a browser works. Just it's a good to know information. Eventually, it might come in handy or I just told you 10 minutes of facts unrelated to your life. But so what I want to explain now is that web layouts have changed a bit over the years. When you started, no layout. And then there was no CSS at the time, so people used tables because they're creative. Then when CSS came about, people started to use floats because that was the only thing you could use to sort of lay things out on the page, or kind of adjust things on the page. But floats actually weren't meant for layouts. Floats were meant for to make your text flow around the flow around your image. That's, that, that is the purpose of float. It's, that is still the purpose of float. But we just managed to hack float to, to make it do layouts. That's why it was so hard. That was so hard to use floats to make proper full page layouts. That's why when you try to make a full page layout with floats, then you're like, oh my god, the columns will never be the same height, that sort of thing. Because floats themselves were never meant for it. So eventually people started using frameworks because somebody took up the pain of writing all the correct classes and applying all the hacks. So you have frameworks like Bootstrap Foundation, most popular, and everybody like, okay, I'll just let Bootstrap do all the work. And my everybody's website just started to look like Bootstrap, which is honestly kind of boring. So with CSS Grid, we now actually have a proper way to do layout. We have a proper way to control where everything goes on the web. And that's why CSS Grid, a lot of people are very excited about it because it's, it's really a, we finally have a proper way to do things. You know, it's like we've been doing things anyhowly for the past 20 years. And, and now we actually have a proper good way to do layout. So there's going to be some basic terminology that I will be, uh, talking about throughout this workshop, so let's just get everybody on the same page. For, for grid, um, the lines, we refer to each of, we sort of can tell where to put things based on the grid lines. So grid lines are actually numbered, I'll go into a bit more detail later. But so these lines are grid lines and you can refer to them using uh, their numerical index. You can also name lines, I will cover that later, but so grid lines refer to the x and y coordinates of the of your grid so each individual track that's where your things sit so horizontal or vertically each single column or row is called a grid track each individual you know bit is called a grid cell a collection of grid cells becomes a grid area and one really how let's how should we put this convenient addition to CSS that we never had before is the ability to define a grid gap. Because if you have used Flexbox and you've made a layout out of Flexbox and you've tried to like, oh, let's, we can't have everything like next to each other without like, introduce some margin between. It just is a very complicated endeavor. I've seen some people use like, oh, you must negative the padding. You must negative the margin on the parent and don't know padding what nonsense. But now with Grid, you can just say, uh, grid get 1M, thanks. And then uh, everything will just magically have an even 1M grid. So this is a really good addition, I feel. Like, if you didn't want to use anything else, I think grid gap is enough for you to convert to using CSS grid. So like I mentioned earlier, Flexbox and grid, very similar concept. So it's based on a container chart relationship whereby you have a parent wrapper around all the items that you want aligned on the grid. So there's always a parent, there's always a set of properties you apply on the parent, and then there are a different set of properties you apply on the child. So the, a lot of the properties actually for grid go onto the parent. For Flexbox, 
you still, in order to create grips with Flexbox, you still hit the child. So wait, there'll be it'll, it'll be clearer when you get to the actual code. But this sentence actually sums it up very well. In that grid works from the container in. In in the sense that you need to have a big picture view of how your layout is going to look like from the beginning if you're using grid. All the other layouts actually work on the item, meaning I have to set a width on the item. It could be a percentage, it could be a fixed width, but you have to sort of control the size of the items, then sort of cross your fingers and hope that the browser renders all of them correctly in the correct place. So if you're going to think about it, right, it's like for a grid, you sort of Think landscaping. You sort of plan out like, okay, my, my oak tree is going to be here, my bougainvilleas are going to be here, and then my orchid is at the corner. You can plan that using grid. With layout, you sort of like just throw the seeds around and hope that they grow in the correct places. So, so I think that's why grid is so much, more, so much more useful for layouts as opposed to the other methods. You have more control. So if everybody could just... Uh, can you load your f the index HTML from in the base folder in your browser? I'm going to attempt to do this. And I obviously never practiced this, so this is going to be very heavy. Uh, where's my pressure? So, uh, oh, oh no, why is my styles already there? My god. It will not look like this. It will eventually look like this, but not now. Joke. <laughs> so if you also, ideally, um, you should already have like CSS, a CSS file that is already linked, so you can just type inside. And um, the classes are sort of already scaffolded there. If you want to type from scratch, go ahead, like not stopping you. So it should be just like un unlaid out. So what I wanted to demonstrate in this beginning part is the fact that for inline, if you want to create a three column grid using inline block, your styles all go onto the item, right? So you have to define the width of your item. So it's very blur, but I use cup 100% divided by three to get three columns. You want to try, it's fine. Actually, if you don't want, you can skip this section. Um, float, exactly the same. Also have to apply a width onto each item. Calculation is also the same. For flex box, code is slightly different because you know you have to oh, apply flex to the parent. But for the actual three column alignment, you still have to set your flex basis to a three column set. So if you think about it, right, lay, uh, inline block, float, flex, all these, these columns, right, the grid doesn't exist. Okay? The only reason it looks like a grid is because we force the items to line up in this way. There's actually no grid. The grid is imaginary. But when it, gets to, when you come, when it comes to CSS grid, right, the grid is actually real. And grid is the only layout technique that establishes a relationship between rows and columns. This is a key difference between grid and flexbox. Because flexbox actually only works on a single dimension, meaning you can set the flex direction to row or to column and it will display but in a single dimension. So if it's row, right, it will lay it out one after another. But when you wrap it around, right, there is no relationship between the rows and the columns. So to get them to line up, that's why you're forced to apply a width to each flex item. You're forcing them to line up. But by default, the browser actually doesn't really know that, okay, if I have a three-column grid, right, my fifth item is actually supposed to be directly below my second item. No, the browser doesn't know this. We actually sort of trick the browser into displaying it this way by setting a width. But for grid, you actually can do that because the grid is real. So this, I'm going to cover the properties on the grid container first because if you're going to design using grid, that's the first step. You have to define your grid first, the big picture view, right? So in order to define a grid, this will be the code um, from here onwards. So I'm going to introduce three properties 
in this example, we have grid template column, grid template rows, and grid template gap. Uh, columns and rows have S. No S, no work, okay? So, it's actually quite straightforward to define a grid. And the scene, uh, this is a, what did he do to my, this is horrible, eh? can't even see anything. Can see from the back or not? PMD. Uh, okay, never mind. Plan B. Just. Huh? Okay. I don't know why you are at this session. This is the most poorly run session in the whole conference. Why are you all here at 9 a.m.? Oh my god. I wouldn't be here if I were you. Anyway, okay, uh, let me make the form big. Wait, ah. Uh. Font size 200. What's your cannot? Uh, wait, ah. This is a stupid idea. Text edit. Hi. What's your resolution? Seven twenty. Seven twenty. Okay. So actually, the best one. No, but is the is the is the screen issue not my issue? Is large. What? That's the largest. I'm sorry, can see or not? This is ridiculous. Can you show something? Like I can't see. I can't even see from five feet. Can you show the, the full slide? Ah. <laughs> what? Yeah, it looks great. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're just fine. Wait, 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 I change. No, 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 I, I, whoa, fuck. Are you going to be able to come over? Uh, can I change the color scheme? Um, otherwise, like, I mean, I, I can disturb your workshop and get the screen from outside in here. Uh, uh, I'd rather not distribute Yeah, uh, I have no flow, it's any Um. Um. I, I see if I can change a lighter theme uh, And then I just directly use the, the, the text editor Okay Yeah, give me Sorry about that, I, like, we asked them about the protective They're like fine Wait, 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 wait Actually, like, I also cannot see it Wait, wait, wait Thank you for mentioning though, I'll, I'll report it to the hotel as well. I'm sorry, everybody. Are you joking? Okay, is this visually better in any way at all? This one can see from the back? This one's better, right? Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay, then I'm just gonna keep flip. Okay, okay, okay. We are. Uh? Logistical issues. Okay, not it. Okay. okay, this is what I feel like when I'm at work. Mm. 
Dash. <laughs> wow, LED. Eh. Chair, chair, chair. Cheers. Thank you. No problem, we can't fix that. <laughs> Says the German. Any howdy, any howdy. <laughs> Thanks, boss. I think you have HDMI adapter? I got. Yeah. And then you're set up, huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Everybody take a break! It's a bit wet, don't use the second one. Uh, yeah. Does anybody know how to turn this off? Did they give a remote uh, or something? Oh, there are buttons there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This one. 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 Come let go. Sai si fu. Elevate, elevate, elevate. Can. Oh, actually, Nate, you need to put the screen a bit closer here, too. Uh, so, can you move this in front? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The, I think we should take a wire un, out, out under. No, no, can you not let the wire be under the rostrum? Uh, Thank you. Can we put this bit on the rostrum side itself? Whoa. Oh, on the rostrum, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Can the, the wire is really short for this. Oh. Due to technical difficulties, it's fine on the floor. My, my life, my my like, oh, my life is suddenly so clear, so much clarity. I was blind and now I see. Tai to jo, tai to jo. Can everybody see? Uh, Good. I also cannot see. I know. I know. Yeah, I'm going. Do you get him though? Okay. Can you see? Oh, you, do you want to shift or not? Oh, you want to... Do we have power here? Uh, yeah, can I just squat on the ground? Then I can sit there. I mean, we have another power plug here. Wait, if wait. You want to move your entire man, man. setup. No, I got new, I got new plan. I got okay, plan B. You will lose power. Uh, rostrums are not for people like me. Uh, now we can push it a bit further away. I want to see my screen. <laughs> you don't need to see me. You can hear me, can Liao. I'll let you fix it. See you as part of guy. Really? Another one, another one. Huh? Another one? Another one. Okay, I'll go back to the rostrum. Yeah. Go, 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 go back to the rostrum, we can't see you. <laughs> Wait, uh, let me. Oh, this color is nice. Oh, firewatch. Eee, I like. Yes! Sure. Ah.
Yes, sir. The first natural coffee of the day. Sorry? Wow, sponsored coffee. Thank you. Thank you, boss. Sponsored by... Microsoft. <laughs> Again, uh, I sincerely apologize for this haphazard workshop. If you ever see my name as a mentor, don't sign up. Hey, why you forever take the unglam photo? Then my mother think I'm not doing good job. You're doing good job. It's she does. Then my mother think I'm monkeying in real life. Zai <laughs> Malao. Uh, yeah. This uh, more better to <laughs> Can reach me? Yeah. Eh, but here, like that, I can see eh. Huh? Then it's easier for me. Like this kind of? Mm. So yeah. Yeah. People pay to see you, no? I will occasionally stand up and walk. Okay. 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 Uh, is it legible? Can you guys hear see the words on the screen? Is it okay? I was where? I was here now. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. It's very clear, eh? High HD, yeah? Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I also, uh, hey, thanks for the sound effect, guys. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> If you all hang out with me too long, you'll become as monkey as me. No guarantee. So yeah, think about it. <laughs> oh yeah. Wow, like that, I want 4K monitor at work, yeah. It's the best. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you all are now using uh, the first example, right? So like I mentioned the the properties you all want to use are grid, template, row, uh, columns with an S. So uh, for the benefit of this example, let's just do a fixed layout first because you know easier to understand. Uh, probably. Okay, are you ready again? Uh, yeah. Why? Okay. Good. Um, since we had a break right now. There's natural coffee outside once Hujin allows you to leave for a moment. Hey, you all can leave any time, man. <laughs> like, seriously. And there's a cocktail robot outside too. And you put one QR code already on social media. So if you're not following our Twitter account yet, you might want to do that. Um, come anytime outside whenever you have a break or before lunch or after lunch or in the afternoon or in the evening. Like, it's going to be there all day long. So enjoy. <laughs> Oh, um, fun fact, if you are using Sublime uh, text like me, uh, the latest update for the CSS3 plugin right, got auto-complete, you don't have to type. But if you don't have, just type by hand, don't be lazy. So what grid templates row? Oh, sorry, you first have to display grid. Can you zoom in a little? Sure. Well, <laughs> Acceptable? Can, can? Yeah, cool. Great, okay. Save, refresh. Does it work? This might not work properly. Untested, guys. Okay. Rose. Live coding is the worst idea on the planet. So you should get something like this. And you don't have to follow the values I use also. You all can like use your own values because I mean yeah, why, why, why be, why, why 150? I have no answer. 
So use whatever you want. If you want to use M's, if you don't want it to be standard, so you can like start playing around with it. So like, okay, you want it uneven, then okay, lo, uneven. Things like that. So it's actually that's that's the first. That's how you actually start getting a grid. Um, so if you look at the code, right, it's it, it's a, it's a bit visual. So if you have three values, it's three columns. If you have you know four values, it's four columns. It's this is actually what I like about uh, using CSS grid is because it's actually visual inside your code. And later there'll be a few a, a, a few more properties that are that that continue this trend of visualness. But okay, let's do this is my favorite. Then Sublime Text doesn't even know about it yet, so your dummy is an error. But once you grid get right, ta da! So you don't really have, you don't even have to calculate margins or even nonsense. But the um the only thing is that for now it's universal. So you say I, I cannot say like oh I want this grid gap to be one M, this one to be two M. Not yet. I think uh it's coming soon that you can define you may be able to define the column gap, but for now cannot. For now it's just overall uh, gap. The horizontal one? The horizontal gaps. Yeah for now it's all standard. For now, for now. Um I think it's gonna be updated soon. So this is the most uh basic grid that you have. Okay, moving on. What did I plan? Ah, so you can also name grid lines because if you uh, remember very early on, right, uh, I said that under the terminology, okay, so now this is the reason why I force everybody to go and install a new browser if you don't already use Firefox. So if you open the dev tools for Firefox, Firefox has this layout panel. Nobody else has it. And you can see, um, it will show you every single uh, element on your page that uses display grid. So in the, there's two because in the bottom I have one more. La. But let's say if you happen to define uh, eight grids, you'll see all eight grids. And it allows you to change the color so you don't get yourself confused. So let's say you don't like purple because the default value is purple, right? Then you can change the color and then, uh, yeah. So when you turn it on, you can see. You can see the grid gaps. You can see the line number. So I was... I thought that only Nightly had this, but I was told that even the normal version has this grid display settings whereby I can toggle on line numbers. Actually, I don't know why you want to turn it off, because I always keep it on. Uh, you can also toggle line area names, which I will cover later. Um, one thing that the uh, Mozilla team is working on is to actually figure out a UI, a proper UI to display uh, line names. But right now, uh, you, you can't actually see line names. So the use case for having grid named grid lines is that this is a reasonably simple grid. Like, oh, it's just three columns and two rows, and my number only goes up to four, right? So imagine if you had quite a complicated grid that maybe goes up to uh, like, oh, I want 20 columns. So and if I want to position something in the middle, I'm like, oh, do I, I'm, you're not going to count each of, the, each of the columns to get to the lines. So what you can do, grid allows you to name lines. So the syntax is square bracket. So you can say, um, ayah, it's, I'm too tired to think of decent names, okay? At first start. <laughs> Please think of more intelligent names than me. Obviously my IQ is in double, like single digits right now. And you, there's no limit to how many names you can name your lines. So for example, wh why does this make sense? Because I can like do this. So both apple, and and banana start technically refer to the same line. So it will make your code a bit more uh, make sense-ish. Give me a fruit that starts with C. Cranberry. Cucumber. Cucumber fruit meh? Okay long cucumber. Cucumber not a fruit man. <laughs> Okay, this is a ridiculous example. Okay, you, you won't be able to see this on DevTools because not there yet. Eventually, Firefox is going to push out an update where you actually can display the, the, the name, named lines. It's just, from a UI perspective, it's a bit tricky because if you have funny people like me who name, who give like five names and all the names are very long, like all called hippopotamus, then it's very hard to display nicely. So I think they're just thinking about that for now. So what we can do after we've named grid lines is, uh, you, when you place your item, uh, I will cover this um, in more detail later when I cover properties on the grid item, but um, usually you will go with 
you will define exactly where like I want I want item F to be here. I I will refer to it as like three slash four. So it's like start and end position. So instead of three slash four, I can say cucumber start, cucumber end. That's the purpose of named lines. So you can you keep this in mind first. We'll use it a bit later. Keep in mind that you can name your grid lines. Okay, so let's move on. Oh, this is an example. Okay, let's just play with this example. Uh, no. Wow, which one is this? My goodness. La, la, la. Nope, not this one. Not this one. Uh, okay, inspect element. Grid 2. So if you are not in the layout panel, you can actually highlight the grid and grid, grid, grid. If you can see, do I need to zoom? I zoom. You can see this weird waffle thing. You can click it, it'll turn on. So you don't have to go to the layout panel. You can do it from here. You just have to click this waffle icon. Yeah. So then I, I'll turn on this so you can see. Uh, so if I change this to gamma and then my item C just stretched the whole line. So I don't have to use numbers, I can use names. This is just a demonstration. Moving on. So other than naming the grid uh, lines, I can name grid areas. So I go turn this off. So I, like in this example, I have four columns and two rows. Let me turn this, take this out. So, okay, turn on. So you can see I have four, uh, where are my numbers? Four columns, uh, three rows. So what you can do, there's this one more property called grid template areas. So what you can do is you can name your grid. So the syntax is your syntax is supposed to mirror your columns and rows. So you can see it's four columns and three rows as well. And if I want to have, I don't want anything to be in that particular cell, I use a dot notation. So for this particular example, I have three items. So what you do after you name your grid areas is that you can assign these areas to your grid items. So I have three grid items for this example. Um, if you follow using your exercise code, your selector is different, so you 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 all notice a bit, uh, inspect or something. Um, so you can sort of assign each item to its specific area. So the benefit of using this is that I, if I want to change the layout, maybe if I'm doing a responsive design and I want to change the layout at a different point, I don't actually have to go to each grid item and write um, a new assign a new area for it uh, at a different media query. You can just directly change the grid template areas. And you can see, okay, now it takes up four. Or like, oh, I want B to be longer. Okay, I can do this. Or I want C to take up. I can do this. So you actually only need to apply the change to, you can just directly change your grid at each different breakpoint. For in terms, I think this, um, is most applicable if you are doing responsive design. One of the first examples we'll be covering later will make use of this property. But I find it quite useful for when I'm building uh, dashboards or web applications because somehow that's my day job now. Um, this is quite useful um, because I can sort of assign all my grid items and then I don't have to think about my grid items. I can just think about the grid. So this I feel that uh, this makes the grid areas property very useful. So that's that. Moving on. Okay, so the grid specification is very long. Okay, now I'm going to stand up. Has anybody actually read the grid specification before? Ah, very good. So you just have to trust me when I say that the grid specification is like, I don't know, a hundred, if you print it out, it's like a hundred pages. 
I don't know lah, but it's a lot of paper. But what it does introduce is this new unit called the FR unit. And it represents a fraction of the free space in the grid container. So this doesn't look good on the slide. So it looks good on the code. So moving on. Name grid area. Skip. FR 1.3 IO. Okay. Uh, three, huh? Okay. So for what we can do is um, with template columns to see it in action. Let's say one fr, and then the last two we make it fixed, lah. Okay. And you don't actually have to define rows. One dimension, if you need to. So I'm going to be lazy, I just declare like that. Did I just spell something wrongly? Uh, oh, sorry, I uh, forgot the most important property. Uh, everything only works, you've got display grid, no display grid, nothing works. My bad. Okay, let me take this. Take it out. Okay, is this too small? Should I zoom? I will zoom. Oh yeah, but zoom hole, not accurate. Okay, so what I did, right? I have three uh, I have three items. I put them in three columns. My last two columns are fixed. They are 300 pixels. Uh, first column is 1FR. So it just takes up all the remaining free space after the browser gives, okay, item B and item C, you each are 300 pixels. The rest of the space, item A can take everything. So that's how, it, that, that's, that's the basic premise of it. So how, it's a ratio. So let's say I decide to make the second one 2FR. Then we can see what happens. Is that now item C will always be 300 pixels because, you know, fixed. But now the remaining spa free space will be distributed in a 1 to 2 ratio for item B and item C. And people wonder why developers have to resize browser a thousand times a day, right? This lah, to see effect, right? So, um, so this is pretty useful for responsive design because you can sort of, um, you're letting the browser do the calculations for you. You're letting the browser decide how big an item should be because at the end of the day, you won't know, you won't know like what is the size of the screen that your user is using anyway. It could be a like really nice TV or it could be my, my really, really tiny phone. So why would you want to specify a fixed width and then, you know, you, you end up breaking some at some point. If you use flexible units like this, even like, even percentages is a flexible unit, right? It sort of lets the browser do the calculations. Um, FR is, is, is useful because it's more, um, predictable than percentages. Percentages is quite tricky actually because it's always a percentage of something and I guess for width it's fine but every time it comes to height it just like 100% height never works guys just don't do it. But you know you have a number of flexible units at our disposal now we have percentages we also have viewport units I might talk a bit about it later but essentially I think that we should be moving towards using more flexible units because we're just seeing the calculations to the browser who can obviously calculate better than you, right? So that's the FR unit. I should go back to my slides. The structure is in the slides. Ah, okay. So this is one of the nice things that we can do. You'll notice this repeat function, which I'm going to talk about very soon. But um, so for, let, let, let's explain this code, right? In this, it says grid template columns, repeat three, but it's three... Two. So if you can see, right, the these these pictures are in the ratio of three is to two. So then you end up with something like this. Why? Because it's a fraction of the free space available. So when I resize the browser, the free amount of free space available changes, and so the browser will sort of render all my elements according to the ratio. So, so you can get a fluid design this way. So if you notice, right, I used repeat three and the pattern repeated itself three times. So that's the premise of the repeat function, um, which will be covered later. So never mind, we move on to the min max function first. So min max function I think is really nice because we've never been able to do this before. We've always only been able to define like a fixed 
a, a single value for, for, for sizing. So it could be a fix or flexible value, but it's always that one value. But now you can actually define a range. You can tell the browser like, I want my, my item to be between this length and that length, which we've never been able to do before. And this is really, I think, a very useful feature also when it comes to responsive design. So moving on, la, 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 la. let's do this. I am lazy, so I'm going to copy. You can type if you want to. Wow, I'm very sorry to next door. I'm very loud. Eh. Sorry, next door, guys. Should I be softer or louder? Okay, so if you can see now, right, in this example, um, very similar to the first example, it's just that I set the first column to min max 200 pixels, one FR. So what does this mean? This means that the minimum width of the first column is 200 pixels. It will not go less than 200 pixels. But if it's more than 200 pixels, it'll just take up all the free space available. So start resizing the browser, folks. La la la. See, because once it hits 200, right, it's not going to shrink anymore. So about like, then everybody becomes fixed really. So like 200, 300, 300. So I have overflow. Because I forced it to be 800. But if I have a lot of space, it'll just keep growing. So that's essentially what the min max function does. So keep this in mind that, you know, you can now define a range of values and you can, you can do, you can cap it. So essentially, it's a bit similar if you, you wrote a min width cap. But when you use it together within your, within your column. So if you use a mean width, right, you can only cap the width of your item. This mean width used in this context is actually the width of the column. So all the other items inside that column get affected by this as well. In case you were wondering, like, why do we need this where we have mean width, max width, right? So next function is uh, the repeat function, which I used just now, is to specify a large number of columns or rows that follow a similar pattern. So it's not necessarily that I can only, I only need, like I say, repeat for 75 pixels, that I can only have like one column repeated four times. It's actually a pattern. So let's say maybe you have a pattern of three columns. You're like, oh, I want to repeat this uh, one FR, two FR, 300, this three column pattern. I want to repeat it multiple times and I really don't want to type it multiple times. You can use the repeat function. So the first, um, the first argument is the number of times you want it repeated and then the pattern. So you can use this, in this example, it's repeat 4, 75, 20. So you can see it's like, oh, then I have eight columns. I think that's pretty useful. Uh, okay, so everybody probably understands this. Moving on. Um, so other than specifying the number of, um, the number of times you want to repeat, again, one more step further in letting the browser take over your design is that again you won't only the browser will know how uh, how big the screen is when your user is viewing it. So there are keywords that the you can put as your argument instead of a fixed number like oh three or four these are fixed numbers right. You can use autofill or autofit. They are very very similar in that you tell the browser that oh okay this is the behavior of my uh, my column or my pattern, right? Minimum, minimum with 100, uh, maximum with go, go, like whatever free space is available. And then you tell the browser to, okay, browser, you generate how many columns you think is necessary. So in the browser, the browser knows its own size. So when the browser uh, is on a, like this beautiful Samsung 4K TV, uh, it knows that you will have to generate more columns than if I was viewing this on my phone. So, this example is just to show the difference between the two keywords of autofill and autofit. So when it's autofill, right, um, if you look at the amount of free space available, because now the minimum, the minimum width is 100 pixels. That the, the, the container can contain more than uh, uh, six. And it, so it will respect that I have I actually can have two more columns. Let's see if I can show this. Uh, we are turn it on yo keyword keyword. 
turn it on. So if you can see, right, the browser respects that it can actually fit two more columns. So it like gives it like proper definitions. But if I change it to fit, huh, it will just like collapse the empty, it will collapse the empty columns. So if I use auto fit, um, it will just fill out all the available space. Auto fill will respect empty tracks. That's the difference. So this is the most amazing part of using uh, this, this sort of mechanism to generate uh, regular grids to me. So if you're doing like image gallery or you know the very popular like tout layouts and stuff or like a lot of items, right? It used to be that you had to write a lot of media queries because um, that's quite a common design pattern we see, like maybe e-commerce websites and things like that, right? So my designer will say, hey, um, I have like six columns. Can you like six, five, four, three, two, one? I'm like, no. Like technically, yes. Technically, yes, I can six, five, four, three, two, one. But I will have to write a lot of media queries and my markup will be very convoluted. So I used to reject this sort of design. I say, you have to give me proper multiples. So I, I, I can accept four, two, one. I can accept six, three, one. I cannot accept Five four six five four three two one that no I used to reject those designs all the time because it was too much um, it was too hacky but two lines I can do six five four three two one okay five 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 four three two one because by using the autofill uh, keyword so the autofill keyword right again I'm instruct for this particular example right let's explain I'm I'm telling the browser I want to have a minimum a uh, column width of 10 m's and you, you just browser you own self go and calculate like browser go go ahead and calculate how many columns i need so if you look at the example right at the widest okay um i can fit i can fit five columns so it will it will generate five columns sure but if you think about it right if i have five columns uh to fit perfectly it should be 50 m's but if i'm a, if i go larger than five uh, five columns, but not yet six columns. If you weren't using grid, you you would have uh, uh, this fixed white space. Let's say your container was 55 M's and each of your columns is 10 M's. There'll be this five M's worth of white space that usually is very hard to deal with. But with the FR unit, because I said, if there's more than, it, like minimum cap is 10 M, but if it's more than 10 M, you can grow. So one FR will distribute these five M's of white space equally amongst all five columns. So if you can see in the example, right, it always edge to edge to the parent without me having to do additional, you know those funny cup, then I must cup 100% divide by five plus how many M's for the, to take account for the white space, right? No, no need. You can just do it. Two lines is very clean and it always edge to edge. And whenever there's not enough, enough space to fit five columns anymore, I'll reduce it to four. As it shrinks some more, okay, there's not enough space for four, let's go to three. I literally can five, four, three, two, one. So like, yeah, um, to me, this is amazing. To you, maybe not so amazing because you've never worked agency before. But if you work agency before, you really appreciate this, guys. Just saying. So that's useful. Moving on. Next. Wow, oh, so fast. Okay, then we have properties that go onto the grid item. So. The two steps for using CSS grid is that IO is that you first define your grid. So you think about the design that you want to build, you plan it already. So after you define your grid, then you want to start placing items on the grid. So it's like um, the, my favorite analogy is like it's a chessboard. You define how your chessboard looks and then you place the pieces on your chessboard de depending on your design, however. So the, the placement properties are like as I mentioned, it's um using line numbers, that's the default. So what you would do is, you would, okay, uh, this is very simple, I'm gonna turn on so you can see the lines. This is so useful. If I didn't have this right, I would like, mess up all my designs, cause I cannot see. La 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 la. Ayo, I'm highlighting the wrong thing. Oh, here. Don't use complicated slides. Uh. 
Okay, so you can see for this, this um, so you can see the line numbers. So I, I'm placing my fruits based on the line number. So for the apple, right, um, start at 4, 4, four 5, 2, 3. So that's how I place everything. Uh, you can place your fruits or whatever, however you want it to go. But so you actually just tell the browser where you want your items to be. Grid column and grid row are actually already short hands. Um, the, the, the long hand syntax is actually grid column start, grid column end. So by default, each grid item goes into one cell. So if I don't do anything, um, my fruits are all each going to obediently take up one cell. So uh, okay, and I okay. I lazy to put classes, so I use n child. But everybody knows that n child one is the first thing. So I can make it span multiple grid tracks like this. Okay, my first one was actually the apple. So you it doesn't have to take up one cell because based on what your design is, you might have you know things that are longer or shorter. So these values, right? Mm -hmm. The first value is where you want it to start, and the last value is where you want it to end. So if I don't put anything, the default is the start. So and if I don't put any, uh, if I don't put an end, by default it'll take up one cell. So that's why uh, the code grid column four and grid row two it, it works. It, it, it doesn't break anything. It's just um, it'll take up one cell. Start at 4 for the column count, start at 2 at the row count. But you are free to sort of change it on like change the grid area as and how you want. I choose to use the grid column shorthand instead of writing out grid column start for grid column and 6 because I'm lazy. So I suggest that you do it also. So other than using the numbers, if you remember earlier on we talked about named lines. So that's where you can use your named lines as well. So yeah, so that's how you, that's basically how you start placing items on the grid and how you start building out the design that you have in mind. Uh, moving on. Oh, I covered this already. So, yeah, next. So after, okay, okay, this is going to be interesting. When I did this, right, you see how my apple is stuck on the top. And usually most people don't want, like, you want to be able to adjust your apple. Like, I think centering is somehow a very popular design concept. Like everybody wants everything centered, I also don't know why. So what you have is you have a number of um, properties that allow you to align things along your grid, within your grid, in your grid item, and, and things like that. So, going, aligning grid items. Ah. So if you use Flexbox, right, they would, how many people can never remember Justify does what? Align does what? <laughs> ah, so this is, uh, this is uh, my own personal trick to remember. I don't know if it works for you, but it works for me. Everybody has used Microsoft Word before in your life, right? Everybody, right? So you've also had to uh, justify text in your life, right? You know the bottle, uh, I, I, I'm quite sure it's like on the, on the right hand side, then you have the uh, justify left, justify center, the word justify always shifts your text in, along the line, right? So justify, you just remember, justify is along the line. And there are only two options, only got justify and align. So if justify is this direction, then align must be this direction, no? and then you'll never forget. At least for me, la. if it doesn't, this doesn't work for you, I don't know, think of something else. So for me, it, um, justify and align quite straightforward. Uh, but within justify and align, there are three other words. There's content, self, and items. Content, you need to understand how it works, then you'll remember. Justify content is when your grid, when your parent container is larger than the sum of your items. Usually this will happen if you have uh, fixed, uh, fixed column widths. Because if it's flexible, you'll just take out the whole space. Then these, these properties don't really apply anymore in terms of positioning. So let's say for example, my grid, uh, grid container is 800 pixels. I have three columns, but each of them are 200 pixels. So 
in total, mathematically speaking, if your maths is very bad, 3 times 200 pixels is 600 pixels. If my parent is 800 pixels and my columns are 600 pixels, I have 200 pixels of um, available space. So in this, like, if you can see this tiny diagram, imagine that, okay, so this extra white space, you can actually adjust the entire, uh, your, your set of columns and rows to where you want it within the parent. So you can like adjust it around. So justify content and align content is to align content within the element. Now for justify self, right? So if you look at the color coding, the content within the grid cell can also, because some by default, not necessarily your, the content within each cell will take up the entire space. Sometimes you will have maybe just one line. And the one line will be like all the way at the top, like the apple, right? So you can actually align where you want your content to be within the grid cell itself. Then you use justify self. Justify self is for the grid items. Justify content is for the entire collection, the entire grid, so to speak. And justify items is just telling all the is uh, overall application to each individual uh, item. So you can make all your grid items align to the top, all your grid items align to the bottom. So items is like everybody all together. Then self is for individual. Uh, or you could just try to memorize this table, I don't know. So that's, that's what you can do. So in this example, we can see how it looks like. Justify and align content can do content distribution as well. So just now what I described is positional alignment, meaning I can make all my columns center, start, end. But I can also distribute my grid items using the justify uh, and align content properties. So for positional, to, to, for positional the values is uh, start, center, and end. But to distribute properties, you have also three other um, properties. You have space between. Space between means that all your items are, ev yes, they are evenly distributed, but they will, they will meet the edge of your parent. So that space between, we have space evenly, whereby, let's highlight it, easier to see. And I'm going to remove the grid gap. So when we are at space between, right, it goes to the, 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 the space between each item is equal. And the edge, there's no, there's no space between the edge of the item and the edge of the container. For evenly, right, everything has an equal amount of space around it. So you can see the ones at the, this, this width is half, this distance is half of this distance because it's evenly, the space is evenly. And then we also have space around. Space around, this is a half width of, there's a handy table I'll show you later. This is just confusing to say in words. So, for the first three, those are the positional values for justify content and align content. So start, end, and center will shift the whole thing. Space around, so I use two different colors. For space around, the amount of space around each column is the same. So it becomes a double space in the middle. But for space evenly, the space is distributed. So depending on your design, what effect you want to achieve, you can use these three properties accordingly. Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is for justify and align self. By default, the default property is that the grid item will stretch and take up the entire space of the grid item that you align. So for example, in the first example, uh, in the very, very first uh, exercise that we did, it was 150 pixels and 100 pixels. So that's the size of my grid item. If, if it was the case, that means that by default, the space allocated is stretched. Fill up the whole, fill up the whole area, right? But I can also align it. So for this one, you can see it's all the way. The moment I set 
a value of start, center, or end, the amount of space given to my grid item, it will shrink to fit. Shrink to fit. So B actually only takes up this much space. Actually, A also only takes up this much space. So by default, it's stretched. So the moment I give it a value, it will shrink to fit. So for B, I align, assign it to start. So it's at the, I put align cell start. So we all remember align is along this axis, right? So start is at the very top. For C, I gave it N. So it's all the way at the bottom. For D, I gave it center. So it's in the center. But for all these three, they shrunk to fit. So that's, the, that's, that, that's, a, that's what happens when you use these properties. Uh, for items, it's just everybody all together. So if I, would, if I was going to do something like start, everybody, everybody justifies to the start, everybody justifies to the center. So items is for a universal pattern. Oh, so fast demo now. OK, great. Hey, you all need a break or not? No need? No need? Great. So the, the first example is in the dashboard folder. Let me try and open it. So this is how it should look if you downloaded it. Like, it's just like that. <coughs> Some colors on it because I was feeling particularly colorful when I created this. Um, the end result should look like this. Hold on. Uh, yeah, end result should look something like this. That's the end result. So, starting result got nothing. So, I think if you look at your styles folder, it's perfectly empty. Yay. Uh, ignore the front part, it's just uh, resets. And some colors. So, um, uh, the class is set for you already. So, how do we turn it from uh, nothing to that? So the, the markup is pretty simple, just stack, 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 stack. So we want to define the grid first. So that's actually, that's why I got pencil and paper. Let's just look at the end result. So on a large, on a large screen, right? How would you how would you draw this on paper? Like how many columns will you use? How many columns will you use for this? Two, right? Rows, eh? Three. Right? So it's actually very straightforward. You, you, you draw so this actually spans two two rows, which is perfectly acceptable. So you it's not it, it's not four four, it's actually for every addition you will take the Depending on your design, right? You have to count the most number of rows and use that. So for this, it's actually a two by three. Two by three, yeah, two by three. But then when it's less than, when it's like after it becomes smaller than a square, so it's kind of semi-portrait-ish, it'll become like this. So like this, columns is straightforward, right? You Two columns. But rows becomes... Four. So that's the difference. And ideally, when you draw it out, then it makes it easier to plan. Ah. So what we do is, <coughs> that's why there's a media query written already. I want to introduce one, because most, most people, for media queries, you would use the width one, the width queries, right? Min width, max width. That's everybody has sort of seen before. Has anybody heard of this particular media query called mean aspect ratio? Oh yeah, I type it up. Yeah. So this media query, I find it uh, quite useful as well because how you define it is it's a ratio. Um, the syntax is. You, it has to be two numbers. You cannot just ratio one. That's a syntax thing. But you, so you, you can, uh, the ratio is width height. So let's say a landscape. 
would be something like oh eight five. That's a landscape view. Ah, uh, then like one two. So it will be like one is to two. So this is the aspect ratio media query. So for this particular design, right, the moment that it's less than, it becomes a portrait mode lah. Let's say portrait mode, I want it to switch. Uh, landscape mode. I want it to be the white one. So I uh, rather than actually defining a defining a width, cause I'm not sure what's the height of my uh, user's viewport. Cause sometimes it could be that it's it's really short, but width query we don't know the height. I think this is more useful because for something like a dashboard, right? It could be really small, but as long as it's rectangular, it might still work. That sort of thing. So for this particular use case, maybe can use uh, mean aspect ratio. I mean, if you want to use width, you can also free to use width. This is not a this is not a dictatorship. You can do whatever you want. But for for this example, I choose to use the uh, mean aspect ratio media query so that um, the the landscape and the portrait uh, layout is different. So. For this one, cause it's a mean aspect ratio, so this the code go the code for this one is for landscape mode, and then the code the default code can be portrait mode. So I cannot remember my markup. Hold on. Okay, so we can just define display grid on the body first. Then we just now we already mentioned that we wanted it to be two columns and two rows. Uh, uh, okay. So depending on you, so the uh, I'm not gonna limit how you want to size your column. Me being lazy, I just make it equal with. As for rows, right? I'm going to introduce a new value, um, called. Mean content. I will explain mean content very soon. Wait, let me switch back. Ah. Uh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Before and after. So another keyword value that grid that grid introduces is mean content and max content. So it just means the minimum content width and the maximum content width. Uh, okay, let me mess around and see if I can get a good example. Mean content just means um, so for inline elements, right? So uh, a line of text is an inline element. The mean content is actually the length of the longest word. So for for my first column, right, the longest word. Is dashboard, so it will shrink to fit until dashboard. If I do max content, right? This line is the longest. This ah uh, uh, no no left right left right ba because I obviously am not very creative. It will it will take the maximum content to size the column. So you want anything? No, what's happening? Okay, yeah. So these values are useful when you are dealing with um, text content. I feel you can think about. Let's say there's a particular line that you just don't you want you don't want it to wrap, but you want that column to always be able to uh, contain that line. You can use text content. So for example, I I want up up down down left right left right ba to 
just be a single line. If I apply max content, it will the the entire that will be the biggest. So it will take that it will take that length. If everybody else is okay, I got extra space, but it will always fit this just nicely. So conversely, for main content, it will go for the smaller uh the longest word. So everybody else just wrap and follow. So dashboard because I cannot break the word dashboard. It's a word, right? I can um two words. I can I can break it, but I cannot break the word itself. I cannot make it like. Dashboard R then D bring down cannot the browser will not do that so it will take the longest word so that's the difference between main content and max content so if you think about it from a height perspective it also works. Hi sir. Okay, everybody go and drink tea. Come back later. Twenty minutes can. Uh, free and easy. Uh, uh, 20 minutes. So by 11. Ah, uh. uh, Ken. Come back, 11. Cold, ah? <laughs> sit on the floor, it's warmer down here. <laughs> I'm not going to sit on the floor and cold. <laughs> like, stop trying to put me on the rostrum, guys. <laughs> um, okay, hi, everybody, we are back, right? Um, so when we left off, uh, when we when we left off, we just started finding the grid. Um, so ideally, right, most of the time when I'm doing grid, right, I will almost always have it on, uh, have this on because. So when we just define the grid, it, um, right now it's very basic. It's just a grid. Um, I have two columns that are both uh, one fr each. So what this means is that it will always be half, half of whatever, right? And um, so just as I mentioned the mean content max content property. Um, so it always it also works for rows. Uh, so if you if you if you notice. Um, for the this is a H H one I think I put it as a H one. Can't remember. Uh, can tell can tell. Okay, it's a H one. So by default, the browser probably makes it two M. Um, the one at the bottom is just a normal, uh, browser default. So when I put min content, it will shrink to fit. So um, I don't have to really think about how to size the, the height of my columns. I chose to just, you know, uh, browser, you just go and fit the minimum height of my text and, and leave it. So that's why I chose to go with um, mean content and uh, mean content for the, the bottom column as well. Because you see, it will take the biggest one. Uh, and H1 is big, obviously bigger than a P, so you will have to follow the, the height. So it will always fit, so you won't get things overflowing. So that's the reason why I put, put uh, uh, these values. But then as you resize this, right, and because this is a wonderfully wide, beautiful TV, which I want to steal home, um, this doesn't, this, this is growing a bit too much. Uh, growing a bit too much for my liking. So what can we do for this? I'm thinking, like now in the back of my mind, I'm thinking maybe we, we should cap, uh, we should cap the, the growth. So we can make use of the, why don't we just make use of the min, min max function. And uh, I give it a minimum and a maximum. Because you don't necessarily have to use one FR as the maximum if you don't want to. So, I just want to give it a range of growing and shrinking. So I chose these arbitrary values and you can choose your own arbitrary values if you want to. But the point here is that
it will just grow and shrink. Um, is everybody familiar with viewport units? Like, do all of you know what VW is? Everybody knows, right? So, again, I chose this arbitrarily because I like 45 viewport units, probably okay as it grows. Because I don't want it to be fixed. I want it to be kind of flexible, but not too flexible. So, okay, we think this is a bit too much, right? Let's go with, uh, <coughs> go with 30 and see how it looks. This is a big reason why I don't do things like code in the dark, because I like to code in the light, and I can see my differences. <coughs> okay, so 30, oh yeah, then refresh, where? Yeah. Okay, 30 looks better, actually. So, okay, let's go with that. Um, okay, but now, like, 20 doesn't look very nice, because my A got cut to the bottom. Uh, actually, I can also mean content, right? Let's try mean content. Oh, no, 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 wrong, wrong, wrong value. Max content, ah la. Refresh. Eh, okay, this is not bad, this is not bad. I can live with this, I can live with this. Okay, uh, let's try max content la. Welcome to the most any Howley workshop you'll ever be. Um, so, one thing you will realize is that Ah, this one FR, right, is amount of free space. Why is it not taking up the full length? So another, like, let's start inspecting this problem. This problem arises from uh, Like I said, right, doing height, doing percentages, oh, it's always not, not fun one, because if you notice, right, it is taking up all the free space, but my body element only, only reaches uh, 300. So we should add this here. And hide 100% on body only works because I already added it into HTML. If you, I, I think if you didn't, I, I'm not sure it'll work or not. Eh. Okay, try again. Yeah, if you didn't add it to HTML, right? Hide 100 doesn't work, one. So that's the, that's the quirk of using percentages. So let's say if we really don't want to do this, right? can use instead of percentage is you just use viewport unit. Uh, so it will just take up the height of the viewport. Um, the thing about viewport units is it's a bit tricky to manage height or width. So it's not relative to a container. It's always relative to the, 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 the height and width of your window. So it might be a bit trickier to manage if it's nested within many components. You might end up the, the, the sizing might be a bit odd. So they still use cases for percentages and they still use cases for viewports. Um, some, I have done design where it's all viewport based, but I had to do the calculations outside by hand. Meaning, oh, okay, if this is 50, uh, my container is 50 VW, and I want it to be like 20%, then I have to do the calculations, I'll do the maths by hand outside. You can do that if you want to fully viewport units. Later, I will show you a demo of a completely viewport unit. I, I did a lot of maths outside. But for now, that's later. For now, so we have this. Uh, we settled on max content. So the, um, the layout, the grid is OK already. So now we just need to place the items correctly. What was my end result again? Uh? I have a slide for this. Come on. Okay. Uh, wait. Pause. Dashboard statistics. Wait, wait, wait. Statistics on the top. Score at the bottom. Okay. So for this particular use case, right? This is the one where I want to use the uh, uh, grid template areas. So what we can do is um, <coughs> reference. Uh, so the title, title on the top. Uh, the second column we have stats. Wait. 
Let's call it stats lah, huh? Cause I lazy. Uh, the syntax is a uh, uh, code. Each um, each row is coded. Then next one is score. Then stats again. And then um uh what's this called? Oh my God, what did I call it? I didn't call anything. Let's call it bot. And then. We can call this. Don't know why I call it controls, but. And again, you can name this anything you want, okay? Go ahead and use like cucumber or whatever. So, if you can remember what I mentioned earlier, right? This corresponds to. This will correspond to how it looks, literally. So, in a sense, right? My stats will take up the. I have four. Wait, ah? Uh, one, two. Oh, something wrong. Wait. I'm missing one row. Mean one more, one more. Mean content. Okay, I add one more row because I want the score to be to be the fit the score as well. So actually it's four uh four rows. Four rows. So because it's four rows, so uh title first row, uh score second row, stats will spend both rows, uh bot takes out its own space on the third row, controls take out its own space on the fourth row. And uh both bot and control will spend two columns. So this is how it looks. It corresponds to this. So we're happy with this. So after we've assigned the grid template areas, right? We assign each um, element. You put it into its own um, area using grid area. So grid area singular, not plural, no s. Grid template areas, yes, plural, got s. So you have to sort of like take note of this syntax, otherwise. And if it doesn't work, right? Maybe it's a it's a spelling problem. Uh, for grid area, right? No quotes. Just the raw, whatever string you put here. You, you can try it with codes, codes it won't work. Ah. So, type, type, type. And it, so, I think ideally, right, you would like to put your, your, your grid template areas, right? Um, don't make the spelling too complicated, because odds are you might mistype something. And then you'll be very confused to why it doesn't work. So don't don't spell things like necessary or you know the kind of funny words that everybody gets wrong, right? Just a pro tip. Okay, I hope it works. So it should look different from just now. Refresh. Huh. Yay. Do you all get this? Okay. Turn around and look at you. Is anybody didn't get this? No no response. Yes. Any problem? Got problem? No problem? Great. So the the nice part about the dev tools is that you can actually see your names. Uh, you can toggle it on and off. Like if it's very irritating, it's blocking your words, right? You can turn it off. But I think it's very helpful to have it, so you can know if you assign your um, area to the correct place or not. And you can also see if, like, let, let's say for example, right? I uh, let's go back to my original mistake, right? Then I, I take away one of these. I uh, actually not sure what happened. So let's see what happened. Ah, uh, then you can see something wrong already, because it looks really weird. One thing that I didn't mention, uh, just realized that instead of the the bot being instead of the bot being being the 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 larger area, it became the stats. So you realize that it it doesn't correspond to what I'm to 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 what I allocated. The thing is, the browser is smart enough to know that if I actually define four rows, right, it will implicitly generate one more row. It's just that because I didn't um, I didn't define the size of the row correctly, the browser just automatically defined it for me. But it will not break your layout completely. It will just make it look weird. Anyway, let's just make it normal. So this part is settled already. 
So what we want to do next is the one is the layout that when it's uh, the, the white layout. So let's look at how the white layout is supposed to look like. Okay, this one don't need layout. Play. Okay, look like this. So um, the layout has kind of changed a little bit. Uh, this is the one with the three rows and uh, two columns instead. So what we'll do is we will adjust. These two remains the same, so that's fine. Don't need to copy it over. Just copy this over inside here into your media query. Okay, then we can start modifying things. So it looks like this. So I think we can keep the columns. We just need to change the rows. So let's take out one row. So this works, but we will reject we will reject the positioning of where we want to place each item. Uh, change the template areas. So now we only have three rows. So now we want title up top. Stats has moved. Stats have moved to this place. Uh, the bottom one is score. Now the bot takes up two cells here. Controls maintain save. Uh, everybody can get this right? <laughs> can or not? No problem, ah. Uh. Okay, okay. So the layout set. So now the issue is um, alignment. So we want to run through how to align things properly. Um, for the ridiculous text, yeah. Let me read what I wrote. This is supposed to be a game, but okay, okay, okay. We want to center this. We want to center this text. Um, so off the top of your head, how will you center this in the center? Okay, you can look at the. We we, we look at the markup hall. Uh, but <coughs> okay. So based on the alignment properties that we talked about earlier, how would you center the? How do you center the rubbish text that I wrote there in the center of the board? Anybody? Like what properties will you use? Something, something align? Align what? Because there are three. There's, there's, oh, they turn off the icon. No, 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 it's a bit higher. Okay, so we had uh, justify content. Uh, we have justify content. We have, we have justify self, justify items. So, which one would we use? Self. Okay, someone said content, someone said self. So what we if you don't know, right? Just try and refresh. This is how web developers work, folks. Uh, so we will go to the bot. We try we try the vertical one, vertical axis first lah, huh? Align content. Spoiler alert, this is not it, but let's just try it anyway. Nothing happens because it's not, obviously not the correct one. Self will do something, but not what we want it to. Yeah. So, so this is the, if you, if you remember when I, when I showed, I kept saying that once you apply a value, uh, to the align uh, cell property, it will shrink to fit. So, in a sense, it is correct. It aligns it to the center, but that's not necessarily what we want because uh, we still want the game board to take up the entire space, right? So this is this is why flexbox and grid are meant to be used together. So what we we would still want to use the align self property, just not on its own. What we want to do is, we will make the bot 
grid item itself a flex parent. So once we do this, right? We can get we can get this whilst maintaining the size of the grid item. So the grid item is still a grid item. It still uses its default value of stretching the entire uh, area of the cell. But then we can align items within it when it, it itself is a flex parent. So oh, you know we just do the standard flex things. Um, let's wrap and then we one hundred percent. Then get something like this. So we don't want to use align items, we use align content. And then we do text align center. Then my content center. So then center. Um, okay, let's talk about this situation. When you use flex, I know this is not part of grid, lah, but flexbox is relevant. The alignment properties on flexbox are a little bit different from uh, grid. Very similar, there's a but the behavior is different because both properties are are for different things. So I, in the very beginning, I mentioned that flex is single dimension. So in for this particular case, right, uh, when I say flex wrap, it will wrap around. So what align, um, what align content does is that it will align the lines as a unit. If I use align items. It's actually aligning each. So can you imagine, right? The flex line because I put width of this to hundred, right? So the next one has to wrap down. So you imagine there's a flex line. So it kind of looks like I have a slide for this. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Uh, la la la. Google Developer Day. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yay, Beyonce. Uh, ah. So, <coughs> how it works is that when it wraps down, right, these purple lines are called um, uh, flex lines, right? Align items, align it along the line. Instead of the whole thing, align content will align the whole thing. But align items actually aligns along the line. So, if it flex, when it flexes, it will take up the entire height. So, it becomes like that. That's why it's very spaced out when you use align items. It's actually centering also, but it's centering along the flex line. So that's the difference. Um, so that's why we use for, for this particular case, we use content. Because I want the content to be treated as a, a whole and center at the center. So that's why you use align content. Um, so justify content shifts. You actually need to start, it will be uh, at the left. Simply because, right, this text is um, smaller than the width of my entire cell. So it will shift as a whole. If I did not put text align center, it would just be a left align to the left. So in this case, because I want to center everything, right, I'll just do it. When it's centered, it will just move to the center. So the text align center is to align everything to the center because this, this is correct. It's just that it takes up a hundred percent. So it doesn't shift when I use justify uh, um, justify content. So every so to center everything centrally, right, you have to center three things for this particular item. So that's why it's a trick question and that you had to actually make this bot grid item itself a flex parent. Are y'all confused? Not confused, right? Very clear, right? Great, thanks. Love you all. Um, so for controls, how should we center the controls text? 
Anybody? Why you all like that? Actually, this one not complicated at all. Just text the line center, can now. Yeah. So so that's that's it. That's that's the. That's how you get the end result. So alignment is set out, and it should work properly. Uh, my firefox is broken, so I'm going to do this. Yeah. So I'm assuming everybody can get this effect. Uh, not a lot of code. Everything aligned nicely. It's responsive. So that's the first example. Uh, the next example uh, is this. Uh, uh, I, I was informed that this was uh, very complicated. So we have, I don't know, one hour. Uh, let's see. Huh? We see how. Okay? So this particular design kind of looks like something like this. Um, something like this. Uh, let's try to build this. Uh, okay. So the code is in here. Shoot. Uh, the markup is the markup prepared already. The markup fonts and image is prepared already. So if you load it, let me try and load ah. Uh. Eh, why is it here? Okay, uh, this is how it looks like uh, without any styling. Um, so, okay, uh, this is the most basic of basicness. So without any styling, it looks like this. So at the end of the day, right, the, the markup is, the markup structure is actually important. Because if you all were around for the, for the accessibility talk, you all understand that screen readers actually follow the markup order. So you would want to set up the markup in a, in, a, in a semantic way, in a sense that, OK, my, my H1, my title comes first, and, and and I think a good way to check how semantic your markup is is not have any styles to begin with. You just write a markup first and you see how it looks like. So this is quite reasonable, I feel, from a semantic perspective. Um, so first things first is to get this. How, how would you break this down into a grid? Like, how will you divide up everything? So that's what the pen and paper is for. Where's my pen and paper? So let's, let's try and break this down. Um, my, from the results of my planning, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I end up with six columns because let me explain. This is one column. This is another column. This probably needs to be another column. And then this artist spotlight would be in its own column. And then this read more is one more column. So one, two, three, four, five, six. These items, right, can because we can span multiple columns. Our item can span multiple columns. We want to reduce to the smallest. How I plan the columns, and maybe you might you might think of it differently. I'm just gonna share how I plan the columns, right? In my mind, it's like the smallest component each have its own column. 
So when I saw, when I see this design, this is the end design that I copied from somebody's dribble shot, right? When I start to plan the columns, I would think that go for the smallest component. So ideally, you could have this as one column, but then it's very hard. It's going to be a bit hard to align this. So I would rather have this in its own column, and this full text can take up two can 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 consume two columns, because this this and this right i would like them to maintain their their width i wouldn't want it to break I, I i just want it to behave like just i give it its own allocate its own space but this this is a length of text that i feel can grow and shrink so i give this one its own column and uh let me think uh. for this space actually i actually gave the space its own column as well because eventually you want the you don't want the you, you, you want it to grow but you don't grow too much. You want to maintain a space at the widest length. So actually I, you, you can choose not to give it the so this part right, this part is actually optional. It depends on how you want to code out the design. Because the original design is this is full length. They had this very nice white space. But when you think about it, right, when you compress, what's the first thing that you can compress? From a design perspective, in my mind, the first thing that should, can be compressed is this white space. Because when I don't have that much space to, to work with, I wouldn't want to immediately shrink my text. I want to keep this, uh, this length, because it's quite a nice, comfortable length, as much as possible. So what I chose to do is I introduce an additional column, technically not necessary, but from a design perspective, right, I give it... I, I allow this to be a collapsible space. So that's why they are, and I end up with six columns. Um, so this is the end result. I don't know if you all can see, but it's six columns. One, two, three, three space. One, two, three, four, five, six. I was wrong. Read more is actually part of him. So five, five is for text. You can see because this line is actually in the fifth column. So this is actually one is together. And this one is together. So artist spotlight is its own column. So six columns. Then for rows, right? Rows is a bit more straightforward, just four. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, well like that. So one, one for the title, two for here. This one three, this one four. So it's six columns, four rows. So this is a bit more of a... This, this is why you need the pencil and paper. Because if you did... If you looked at this, of the, the actually the first pass, I didn't come out with this. It took me multiple passes. So the first pass, I actually only had four. I had, I had one, two, three, four. I didn't account for this part yet. But after I thought about it, right, I was like, okay. The, the extra column came in from here. And then for this one, right, I realized that I would rather give the tour dates its own column. But if you don't want to give tour dates its own column, you can also do that. Because by right, this column, it can become one column also. Depends on how you want to shrink things. So to me, when you do, when, when, when I started designing with grid, right, there was a lot of pencil and paper. So you can draw and redraw. So like I mentioned in the very beginning, Designing layouts with CSS grid, you have to have a end, you have to have the big picture view, you have to know what you want to achieve at the end of the design first, up front. So it's okay to plan on paper first. And once you plan on paper, everything else becomes much easier. Because once you have this once you have got this this final layout down, the rest of it is actually just tweaking the 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 the, the sizes like I did that like we did just now. So that's how I got my 6-4 uh, alignment. So let's, let's go with the, this 6-4 thing. Um, I don't know if I should just pass this around and you all can take a look. I don't know. Uh, sure, anyhow, Lee, if you want. So that's the 6-4 that's, 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 that's thing. So let's start doing it. Dun, 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 dun. 
Okay lah, okay lah. Uh, if you are lazy, right? The styles, like the actual colors and styles, right? You just go to the final and then you just copy and paste. I forgot. To, I forgot to port it over. I'm sorry. So just 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 copy the colors and styles first. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> All this is not not grid related, not not grid related. So just 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 copy over first. Okay, never mind. Um. Okay. So this, we we take a look at the markup first. So main is the whole thing. Um. The base styles I start off with is for browsers that don't support grid. So we 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 want to sort of take care of the the fallback layout first, because uh, at the end of the day, they they are they are still going to be browsers that don't support grid, and um, we we don't want the layout to be completely broken. We don't want it to be completely plain also. So we just give it a very basic styling. So what I did just now, what I copied over. This one is it, is just to um cap cap it. We don't want the lines to go too too wide. So we cap it and center centralize it. That's fine. Um, in order to make your images responsive, just put uh this is just standard practice. Max width hundred percent. Then it won't overflow. Uh, okay. So this is this is reasonably decent, I suppose. And then what we have is we can do. Let's do the. Okay, this is fine. Uh, na, na, na. H1 You know what? Let's just cut this short. If you look at the, the final CSS, right, you copy copy all the way to line 98 and just paste it over because I really like so lazy now. So uh, you open the open this one. Go all the way down to 98, copy everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very tired now. I cannot already. Um, so basically until, until the support query. So you all just, uh, until here, huh? just replace, replace everything. Yeah. I should look at this. Ah, tired. Ah. But um, because this part I I is 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 not grid uh, It's just a fallback. So I'm just gonna assume everybody can do this without grid. It's fine, right? Um. So eleven works. Uh, it works on on uh on Opera Mini. It's the most basic one. It's very. You can you get you can see the title. You can see this. It's kind of decorated, but it's quite straightforward. Single column, nothing special. Then the tour dates just kick to the side. So once we've taken care of the 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 fallback, then we can start layering on the the fancier layout. So does has everybody seen this particular query before? Hi, <laughs> add supports. Is this new to anybody? Have you never seen add supports in your life? Please let me know. Then I will explain why it is. Great. So everybody's familiar with media queries, right? So in CSS, the query syntax usually is like an add. So add media is a media query. It's a conditional. So it allows us to have if else statements inside CSS. Um, so one of the few things where we can have um, logic in the CSS to media queries in that if the query is true, then it applies the styles within the block. So for add supports, add supports the um, the, the the term we call we call them 
teacher queries and the condition is within the parenthesis. So inside the parenthesis, I will put the property that I want the browser to test for. So the browser knows itself. Browser, I'm the browser, I know, okay, I support grid or I don't support grid. I support CSS shapes, I don't support CSS shapes. Browser knows itself. So browser, when it sees add supports, it will, it, will, it will examine the rule inside the parenthesis and it will check, oh, okay, display grid, do I support grid or not? If I do support grid, I will apply the styles within the block. If I don't support the grid, uh, I don't support grid, right? I will ignore everything inside the block. So this is good because whatever you write inside grid, it will not bleed out. So it becomes, if CSS grid is supported, then everything inside the code block applies. But if I don't write, it totally ignores everything altogether. So your base fallback will never break. Your fallback code will always work. It will always look like this. Even if your browser supports, doesn't support grid, it will, it, the styles inside the grid will not bleed out if your browser does not support grid. That's how it works. That's why it's called a feature query. So the syntax is pretty straightforward. It's add supports with an S. S-U-P-P-O-R-T-S. <coughs> okay? And then um, inside the parentheses, your, your, you will have to have the parentheses. If you don't have the parentheses, it will not work because the browser will pass for the property within a parenthesis. Yeah, so that's just, that's how it is, that's how it works. And that's why we use it. Um, the media query looks a bit complicated. So just, is a, is, but it's not a lie, it's basically a combination. So for media queries, right, you can chain multiple media queries together. You don't necessarily have to only use one. And uh, in total, there are actually 13 properties you can query, but nobody uses all of them. So just now I introduced one uh, lesser known one, mean, mean aspect ratio. I think there are other things like color and, and things like that. But what you can do is that you can use the end keyword to like chain, like only apply if both are true. It's like just logic thing. So you can use and I think you can use all also, but I will double check that and get back to you. Lah. But for now, I want this to apply when these con two conditions are met, that's why it's there. And that's why I wrote it for you, so you don't have to think about it. Um, so let's go and see. When, but even though the styles inside don't bleed out, right, you will still have to do a little bit of resetting on the inside. So for the browsers that do support grid, there are some things that you want to reset. That's why if you look at, it's easier to just go through. Um, Max width and padding, I set to none. These are resets. Because for this fallback layout, right, I did, give it a, I did give it a max width and I did give it some padding. But if you notice the, this one is edge to edge. No padding and no max width. So we want to reset that when we, when we apply grid, we want it resetted. Resetted. Okay, reset. So that's why, they, that's why we have the max width none and padding zero is a reset. So the next thing we do is we apply grid. So after you reset, right? So it stretch out. So this is the, the base that we, 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 we work with. So then, okay, let's put on the grid. So just now we already we are, I already explained through why I had why I had six uh, columns and okay this is the very complicated part that I will go through why I made this decision. So to make everybody's life easier, just copy and paste, guys. <laughs> it's gonna look weird, but don't worry. That's because we haven't placed the properties yet. Turn on, turn on grid so easier to see. By default, if we do not place um, the properties, uh, the browser will just, each element, each grid item will be placed inside each grid cell 
like top to bottom, left to right. So it's like they'll fill up, a, fill up in order. If we didn't specify where we want each of our grid items to go, it will just fill up in order. So that's why this is based on my markup. So just now my markup was uh, the H1 was first, then the H2, then I uh, can't remember what's here, so on and so forth. So let's look at each of the columns. First column, 2 FR. We leave that first. Let me separate this. Six columns, right? <laughs> 2 FR is this bit. This bit here. This one I set it to 2 FR. The, the, next, the second column is for my tour dates. So my tour dates, right, like I mentioned, I, I really don't want it to shrink. Um, I don't want it to break. So I put the max as max content. Just to make sure that it will always be tour dates one line and not tour dates. And then I put, a, I put a cap on how much it would shrink. Oh, sorry, no, no, no. I didn't want it to grow beyond. Because tour dates is a very short, <coughs> it's a very short uh, uh, phrase, phrase. So no point letting it grow and so much white space. So I kept it. Once you hit, uh, once you hit tour dates, right? Don't grow anymore, but don't shrink. So uh, 10m max content is to handle this particular element. Next line is the same uh, concept for this. Cause uh, 10 to 20, 10 Toronto is a bit longer. So I give it a bit more space, 14m. But it's the same concept, max content. So once it hits the longest, I don't want it to grow anymore. So this gives me more space for other things. So that's why the third column is also min max 14 and max content. Ah, so now we have the spacer column. The spacer column is min max 1m and 1fr. So I technically could just make it 1fr. And if I didn't have the min, uh, the, the min value, 1FR would mean that if it will really shrink down to zero. But in this particular case, right, I, I don't want there to be a situation where this, this part touches my image. So I chose to maintain a 1M min. If you if you're okay with it kissing the side, then just use 1FR. That's also fine. But I'm just explaining the logic be, be behind my design decisions. So this column is actually for my spacer. This, <laughs> this, I did not explain fit content. <laughs> um, okay, fit content is same family as uh, min content and max content. In that, the official, ex the official definition is actually very long and convoluted. Uh, in my own words, fit content just means that you grow the max, it, it's min max, but with regards to content. So fit content means that you grow to the, you shrink, it's min content, then max 28M. So it will fit content, but once it hits, it will not grow further than 28M. But it will, it will continue to shrink as per if it was min content. This does not make sense when I say it out loud, but it makes sense in my head. Oh no. Um, think of it as min max auto 28M. How, how can I explain this in English? This doesn't work. Okay, okay. It will not grow more than 28M, right? The, 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 col the column width maximum will be 28M, but it will shrink. It will continue to shrink as per if the minimum was mean content. So I think for this, right, uh, longest word, maybe for photographic, it, it will by right shrink until photographic. Uh, but it will cap at 28M. So that's for this text. And uh, lastly is this one, this artist spotlight, right? is cup 2M plus 0.5 VW. Uh, Let me explain myself. The H2, if I didn't set, 
Okay, H2, if you look at the official, what you copied, right? My font size is a, um, is a variable font size. So, this, um, again, is an optional thing to do, but you can actually make your font size uh, have a relationship with your viewport width by using viewport units as part of your font size. So, this, they, I don't use a set formula. I, like, I bought it to see what it will work. But to, when you use the calc function, viewport width is dependent on, VW dependent on your viewport width, right? So the reason why it's 3M plus a viewport unit is that when, because view, viewport width, when I shrink it, it could go, potentially, it could resolve to a, a value that is really, really very small. So what I want to do is that I will cap it at 3M. So once the viewport width value hits a very small, you don't want your text to disappear. Because if your font size is like, this, this, all these uh, values, right, at the browser side, it will still resolve to pixels. Okay, when, when the, the browser does all the passing, like when I said, very like the first thing I say in the morning is that the browser had to pass all the values, right? It will resolve all these like M units, viewport units, percentages, right? It does at the end of it before rendering, it does pass, uh, it, it resolves to a fixed unit, it resolves to pixels. Like, all these elements, the widths of the elements, um, the, the font sizes of the elements, they all end, at the end of the day have to be resolved to pixels. It's just that the calculation is transparent to us, the browser does its own thing. So 3M plus, uh, if you use only viewport units, it's possible that you will resolve to like maybe zero pixels. That's possible, the, the, the calculation. So we don't want our text to disappear. So we will cap it, like it will, it will, once the viewport unit is zero, right, it will just be 3M. That's the minimum size. You can, so even if my viewport goes any smaller, I'll still keep 3M. My text will not disappear. So it's not fully responsive text, it's, it's uh, responsive text with a cap. So that's why there are these values. Again, like I mentioned, I have no set formula. I, I bought this. To, uh, so what? 3M plus how much? Or you can adjust, you can make it 2M plus 8VW. Really, this is up to you. Uh, just eyeball it. I settled on this because I thought the overlap looked nice. Same for, um, so same for H, H2. Uh, you could make this a fixed uh, font size. That's fine also. I wanted it to just do a bit of growing and shrinking because I felt like it. So because I did this uh, 1M plus 0.5VW for its font size, for the column, I made it 2M plus 0.5VW so that I gave it a bit more space that it can shift. Uh, it will have a spacing between. Because if I made it exactly the same as the font size, there's no space. So it's basically the font size plus a bit of breathing room. And again, this value right is arbitrary. You can change it to whatever you like. Remember, this grid is any howly. It's based on what you want the design to be. This is so you all don't have to follow my values exactly. You all, if you all don't want, you all can change the spacing, you all can change it however. But that's my explanation on why this code exists. Uh, the rows are a bit more straightforward. So for the for rows, I want this design to be fully in the viewport, so there's no scrolling. At the, at the whole, when it's the full landscape view, right, no scrolling, always fit. So I chose to use v, VH as my unit. So if uh, uh, the maths is correct, if you add all this together, it's 100 VH. So it will always fit. So this, in a sense, this is just ratio, ratio of the viewport unit that's being used right now. So with, the reason why I have a mean height query is that when you are using viewport height as your units, right, it will not work at all heights because it's relative to the height of my browser window. If I did not have this, it would shrink to, a, it will break. There will be a point where this layout would break. So the reason for the mean width query to be there is the moment it, it it's less than 27 amps, because 27 amps is where 
it shrinks and any smaller than that, right, my text will overflow, things will already break. So I will choose to not have this layout anymore. This layout doesn't work if my viewport height is shorter than 27M. But, so for myself, the designs that I do, whenever I do this sort of, I want the design to take up the full height of the page, I almost, almost always pair it with a, with a height query. Otherwise, Otherwise, just don't don't use uh, the the viewport height unit because it's too variable already. Yeah, so that's just a that's just from my personal experience. So that's how the grid came about. So now that we have our grid right, but everything is in the wrong place. So what we want to do now is we want to start placing items already. So go back to here. So again, um. Let's just go here. Copy lah, copy. Never mind. So, page actually this title right? It it starts from the it starts from the third column, cause this first two is first two uh, second one for tour dates mah. First one is for the image, so it actually starts from the third. Um, the third column, so the line is as follows, 3, and it's 3 to 6, because it spreads, this one spreads all the way to here. So that's why, that's why it's 3 to 6, uh, it's 1 to 2 because the, the top row. So basically, uh, yeah, move it, move it over to here. Okay, we want to move the H1 over to here, we want to move artist spotlight over to the end here. We want to move. Um, we want to move this down here. We want to move tour dates over here, and we want to move this uh, date thing over here. So if you don't want to use your brain to think, then we should just copy. Now, if you notice, I use this a negative value because. The grid, the, the index is not only, uh, so there's positive index and there's also a negative index. So the use case applies here. Negative one will always give you the last grid line. So for example, this one is a fixed, uh, this one is a fixed defined grid that I, I, I already said six columns. So I, I can choose to put the last number, which is uh, seven. But let's say you use um, auto, auto fit like the browser generated however many columns and you don't know what your how many columns there is you wouldn't know how to you wouldn't know what the last number is so what the browser vendors decided is that we'll give you a negative index so you can always hit the last column if, by using the negative one so that's that's a that's a use case for the negative index so i'm lazy to think i said just the the the, the one most at the side so just use minus one that's why it's one minus one is the equivalent of, oh sorry, sorry, column. I could have used seven, I could have used minus one. But that's the negative index. So for row, we move it here. So this, this positioning will move uh, H2 to that side. Continue going, okay, I have a HR element. The HR element is very irritating, but it was this, it's just for this thing. Huh? It's a decorative element. So if you don't want it there, you can ignore it if you want to. It's not technically not important. Um, HR you can style. So HR if I think if you don't do anything to it, it's just one line. I think it's one pixel or something. So you can actually style it. Um, I apply background color and then I give it a weave. I just styled it to look like that. Uh, HR is actually not important in the grand scale of things. If you want to ignore it, just ignore it altogether. It's fine. Uh, the about is here. So, like as I'm talking, you are, I assume you are copying the code, okay? So, it's just positioning. And if you, you are wondering, for, for this particular layout, why I didn't use grid template area? Because grid template area, you cannot overlap. If you want to do overlap in your design, for example, my image is actually from the, my image is three columns, three columns, but it has to overlap with my title. I cannot do that if I use grid template areas. 
if I want to have overlap in my design, I have to specify the, uh, the column and row numbers. That's the only way you can get it to overlap. So that's why for this use case, no area, no names, no names, just the, no, no areas. Ah. You can name the lines, of course you can. But, you know, I was lazy, so I just used the numbers. So um, that's an explanation of all the, the, the column and rows. It's just to place everything in the correct place. So I'm going to do my own set of copying. Actually, I'm very lazy. You all copy, lah, huh? Are you all done copying? Then I just continue explaining my code. So once you have finished copying, yeah, okay, okay, I copy, I copy. That you'll regret signing up for this any Howley workshop. Uh. Oh my god, I heard the word bootstrap. <laughs> eh. Okay, okay, yeah, his, his bootstrap is real actual software bootstrapping, so that's good. Not the framework, oh my god. What is this and why did I put it there? Huh. Actually, I don't know what this does. Okay, check. Hey, not bad. Looks like something. Oh, I know what that does already. This is actually quite fun. Uh. <coughs> Button. Done, right? Okay. Okay. Okay, if you finish copying all the uh, placement code, uh, I think the, uh, the position is all correct already. Like, everything is in the correct place now. So let's, the rest is just tweaking. Positionally, everything is correct. So for this one, H1, right, if I don't do anything, you'll realize that it's, it's at the back. So what you can do is, the, what the Z index does is it brings it back, it brings it on top uh, of the image. So that's why I want the H, uh, H1 to be there. That's why, that's why I have a Z index there. Bring it to the front. Um, Heading, okay, margin bottom initial. Let's talk about this value initial. Uh, it's, I think it's from IE, uh, IE9 onwards you can use initial. What initial does is that it will reset. So because I had some fallback styles, right? Rather than set it to a value like zero, and then end up having to override it again, right? You just set it back to initial, it'll be the whatever, it will be as if you didn't apply any margin uh, bottom on it at all. That's why actually I quite like using initial for, for resetting, instead of giving it an actual value, right? Before any styles were applied, so I think that's cleaner. Uh, you can choose to put it to zero if you wanted to as well, I suppose. So that's, that's why this is there. It's just to reset the fallback style on top, padding to make it look nice. Um, ah, okay, let's talk about this. If you showed up for my talk yesterday, I, will, I spent like half of it talking about this. So this is how I made the text go uh, do that. Refresh, yeah, then we come like that already. So that's that. Again, this, this is, this, so the positioning we already set up. Now we're just making it look pretty. Um, HR already put in for about. Okay, let's look at about. 
um, about right, you will notice that it's actually at the top, but in the in the ideal design, it's actually to the bottom. So what we would want to do is that, and this works nice. This one we don't need to use the flex trick because this one the background is white. Um, it's okay if if the grid item shrink to fit because you can't see. From a visual standpoint, it's fine. So you can just directly do use the align. You can use the align property. So when you highlight it, right? You can see that if there was a background, right, it would have cut off here. Because the, the, the grid item area has shrunk to fit. But from a visual standpoint, it doesn't matter because the background is still white anyway. So this one don't need to do the display flex thing. You can just align self to the to the end and then it'll just go down. Padding and just make things look pretty. A is fine. Ah, okay, so this I forgot what this did, but now I remember what this does. This is just to create this line. That's all. So if you don't want this line or you want to use an image, also can, but I don't want to use image. I like use CSS, so I just use a pseudo element to create that line. So this is not important either. Moving on. Uh, image. Uh, la, la, la. Location. So location is this uh, uh, gray bit. And so this gray bit is on top. It has overlapped my image. So this is a. Uh, go back. This is. This cut off thing is a trick. The image is actually still rectangle. It's just we styled it to sit on top, on the bottom right corner. So how we do that is that we put in this, this, these are presentation styles, right? So Z again, Z index to bring it on top. Uh, location. Oh, yeah, why so much food? So much work keep nonsense. Oh my god. Bring it to the top. Ah, this one, right? This one we need to do the flex trick because this one background color dif uh, this is a different background color. That's why for these two, even though it's the, the effect is the same, right? This one you you don't need to use the flex trick. It's a from visually you can get away with it. This one visually we cannot get away with it. That's why for this one we have the the, the flex trick. And that's why you apply the alignment properties to the P, which is here. Ah, fun fun part about centering items. If you only have one element within your flex container, margin auto will center it perfectly. Don't have to do any justify nonsense crap. Just put margin auto and it will be right at the center. Only applies if there is one flex. For multiple items, you margin auto, it will not, it, it will spread things around. But if you only have one item, this works. So, so that's. That's how you get it to the center. And lastly, this looks funny for a simple reason because we have styled it in the fallback styles. So these last two lines again are resets to reset it back to its original uh, value so that it will sit, sit nicely on my grid. So that's, that's done already. This is how you... This is how you get the um, um, the the landscape layout. So okay, check. Is everybody here? Can everybody, everybody gone this right? No hard right. Very simple right. Excellent. Uh, what else did I do? Uh? continue. Uh, go up, go up, go up. Go up, open, stop. Did I change anything? Hey, nothing. Eh. Why is that extra? Okay, let, okay, let me think about this. I built this very long ago. What is this? Mean <coughs> wave 48. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, actually, we are done. Uh, but what, what I want to explain is this part. If you didn't choose to do this, then it's not, uh, not necessary. But I'm going to open the, the actual demo. She we are done already. Eh? A bit early. Never mind, I, got, I got more examples. It's fine. Uh, 
Okay, so this is the whole thing. So you notice this black, uh, notice this black line, ah. Uh? If I didn't do the, okay. So it's not perfect, but this part not very nice. So this is the problem with using um, viewport heights for your layout. So there will be a point where it looks funny. So that's why the query will, the query sort of, once my black line hits right, I switch it, I don't want it anymore. So when it, be, when it goes to this, uh, this layout, right, and you turn down, you look, the HR is not there. It's actually there, it's just that the opacity was set to zero. So it's actually just a visual, it, it's just for the line. This last, the last query, right, is, is just for that stupid line. So if the stupid line was not there, that query wouldn't exist. Yeah, this is just an explanation of all the code. But anyway, um, one more thing I want to talk about is the, the fact that the image kind of, uh, you realize that it changes? So the image actually, Normally, what you, you would be able to achieve this effect when you, uh, when you do background size. Background size cover and contain. You, you'll be able to um, sort of change how much of the image is displayed. So there's a new property called object that you would, if you copied it over, it should be here. Oh, never copy. Wait. So if your image doesn't do it, where's my object fit? Oh no no, it was in the top, in the top, in the top. Ah here, object fit cover. What it does is that it makes content images, meaning the images you load into your website using the uh, IMG tag, right? You can let it behave exactly like a background uh, image. So it used to be we never we could if we wanted to do these sort of like sort of responsive images, we had to do the. Um, we have to apply an image to the background. You background image it, and then you background size it, then you do the content uh, cover thing. Now you can do it onto content uh, images as well with the object fit value, and it takes the same values. You can do cover, you can do content, just like background images. So uh, object fit, the support is quite good already. Uh, just don't think about supporting IE, because nothing new is going to go into IE anymore. People should just, <laughs> people should just stop thinking that you will. Uh, IE is now just, Microsoft is just supporting Internet Explorer as a courtesy to like banks and staff who still have to use it. So, so for in that in, in, in that regard, right? There's a there's a good reason why we still use the fallbacks. So that if you end up using an older browser, it's still it, it's not broken. It's just a bit more plain. And that's fine. So that's this this particular uh, demo explained. If I try to follow the structure of my slides, uh, okay. We can either try this or we can try this. Cause this is actually a CSS thing. It's not a you can see the you can look at it. You can look at it. It's quite uh Okay, uh the SVG is for my letters because the font is custom. Uh the flick uh, okay, I have to flicker, so it's flicker. But CSS animation am I. But the grid, the grid, the background is a grid. So, um, so each of these is a grid. So, okay lah. Uh, this one I just talked right on. You, if you want to follow, you can follow. Uh, there's a code pen link. Does everybody have the slides or not? Um, so I think the link is there. Where? Uh, okay. It's a link. Ah, ah link, link, link. So here you can see the code. So you don't have to type. But we can talk about it. Let's just talk about it. Uh, I'm using SAS, so that's why uh, there are variables here. But it's just for the colors, it's no big deal. Um, so when I say responsive, right, this is the this is the when everything is fully viewport. So if I resize, it's always going to fit. So that's one thing. But the tricky part about using viewport units <coughs> is that the... So everything has to be calculated. Lor. So for this particular case, right, it's fine. But when I apply it to here, 
this is not a you have to convert everything you have to convert everything back to a fixed unit otherwise you just for this so here right all the values will add up to 100 okay that's fine but what if you want to use it as a component as part of a, another like you did a website you cannot 100 anymore so that's where you would probably want to invest in a calculator or if your mental sums are really good you have to ratio everything uh, you have to ratio everything to get it get it to, to fit into this size or you for, for, for me for this particular one I, I change it to a fixed but similar is it's, it's actually quite straightforward why why did I have to use grid for this is because let's see if we can find a grid Wow, I got add supports everything, oh my god. Um, so, okay, the grid template rows is straightforward because there's only one row. Uh, the columns are calculated. So, that's how you... Yeah, that actually, actually this, is, this is a stupid example because all you do is for... All you do is do this. Okay, let's not look at this. This is a stupid example. I'm sorry. Let's look at this. This is a nicer example. Did I grade this? Uh. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is why I really like the grid inspector too because even if you transform the grid, the inspector will transform with you. Yeah, so if you want to do funny things like this, right, you can still use the, uh, you can still visualize using the, uh, the green inspector tool, so that's quite fun. Uh. Um, so for this, right, um, each of the, the original, the, the base, if, if I didn't, if, I, if you don't have enough space, right, it doesn't make sense to go diagonal. Because diagonal actually only looks nice if you have a white screen. So that's why for this, the, the transform only kicks in uh, when it's diagonal, that's fine. But to, to, to lay it out, it's, it's gridded. So this is actually the header on one of the CSS trick article, but it was an image. So because at the point in time, I was fun employed and I had nothing better to do in my free time, I was like, okay, let's make this in CSS. So what we can do is a design like this will work because all this, um, you can use all the properties you, you, we, we mentioned before and just place, oh, you can just place everything as, as and when, uh, wherever you need it. And when you see this, right, the first thing you need to do is to design something like this, right, you have to plan it, uh, you have to, all the work is in the planning. So I'm going to see if I can find the original image. Then we can talk through the grid planning process. Because this is really a very any Harley workshop. So when you first see this, the reason why I felt that it could be done in CSS grid is because this, these numbers, they look like they were equally spaced. And then, it's not exactly aligned, but these, all these individual elements, they can be spaced out along a grid because the critical request also looks like it follows a grid. So based on this premise, I was like, okay, let's try to, let's try to st start to plan this. So when we look at the code again, the original, uh, the, the, the base grid looks like, where's my grid? Uh, you want to go and support uh, here nine columns so because it's diagonal right you can't really on the original one you can't really see the rest but you know you prob I just put it in when because when it's when it's this way you, you don't want it empty so how much do you got though it went up to nine so I was like okay no nine so we do nine uh, that, that's, that's the reason why I put in nine columns because the, the original design say 9s so that's nine 
Um, so for the rows, right? Ah, this is fun. Because if you look back at the design, let me close this. You can see, kind of see that, okay, how do I, how, how we want to plan it? This looks like, you can actually sort of make these three elements, they seem to be reg, like regular space. So again, I arbitrarily went with 2M. So the first three is 2M. Because I knew that if I use the alignment properties, I can sort of like make it uneven. But the grid itself can be can be the same length. For the for the text itself, right? Uh, I went with a min max. Uh, went with min max value because I changed the the size to to match my font size. And the last the last two, this one, make it even. And the rest, this v fifty, is just to make sure that it's a header, it's a header height. Because of the diagonal. Actually, when you do diagonals, it's a bit tricky because the whole thing flips out of the viewport. So you actually, to do a design like this, you have to imagine, if your designer gives you a design like this, right? you actually have to imagine what happens here. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a lot of blank spaces. So that's, that's how I came up with these arbitrary values. So again, if I... This circle, right? The only reason I went with 2M is because after a bit of trial and error, it was how this circle would overlap the underneath. So for this particular design, again, it's a lot of eyeballing. You can, and, and, and you play around to change the values of the row. But once you have set up your grid, right, it's really just a matter of placing everything in the correct place. And then you can start styling all these kind of funny things. Uh, for example, like, Things like this are pseudo elements. This is a pseudo element. The the blue circle is a pseudo element with a border. Wait, let me. All all these funny decorations are just pseudo elements. Let's go and see. <coughs> so this one is the be is a before, and then. You, when you use pseudo elements, you can do a lot of these decorative effects without having to put additional markup into your um, into your into your HTML because these are purely generated by CSS. So it doesn't pollute your 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 HTML, but you get you can still make it look pretty. So at the end of the day, right? For for when we want to do all these kind of funny things with CSS, um. I think it's worth keeping in mind that when like I, I call this a CSS grid workshop, but I think you'll realize that there are a lot of properties in addition to CSS grid to make the designs work. So I covered things like uh, object fit la, um, pseudo elements la, things like that, right? So I feel that CSS is a bit different from all the other uh, programming languages and things like that in that it's not modular. Uh, it's, it's, the, it's the type of, it's the type of uh, uh, la language, do I call it a language? It's not a language that you need to use many things together to get the full effect. So even though we, we, when we teach things, we teach them like individually as a module, when you apply it, when you apply it in your work, when you apply it to, to design things, right, you have to keep in mind that it's how you combine all the different properties together to get the end result. So there are many ways to do this. You can easily use a background image for this. Yes, can. Or you can do it with CSS. You can do it with pseudo elements. So for CSS, right, it's a bit more flowy. And I think, again, that's the reason why I think some people, the, the very, very strong backend programmers, probably the guys in the next room, right, probably don't like CSS very much because it's a very, very different way of thinking. It's, it's like, it's really everything is a global variable. And I think a lot of, uh, a lot of, Pure software programmers just think that that's a horrible, it's a horrible thing, ah. But my my take on it is that CSS is not a programming language. It is its own thing. It is a, it is a style sheet language that requires us to manage this whole global variable space. Um, and I have no shortcut for this other than experience, 
because like I mentioned right, a lot of things is I bought. Like even when I went through the, the, the dashboards and everything, I had to save and look, save and look, save and look. Be and, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Uh, code in the dark is fun, but I really wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't do it as a... To, to we work when we design with CSS. Yeah. Uh, what else can I say? Basically, as you can see now, I'm feeling time, right? Because this is this ended faster earlier than I, I imagined. Um, okay, fun things we can do with CSS. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. I, I had this event like two days before JSCon. Then uh, we had a banner. And let's, let, let, let me tell a story of the banner. Wait, let me sh let, I show you the banner first. Wait, 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 wait. Very fast, very fast. La, la, la. I sincerely apologize for the anyhow of this project, okay? Um, yeah, next time see my name, don't sign up, okay? Don't, don't, don't sign up. This is a bad idea. Bad idea all around. Oh no, cannot. My Chrome is broken. Open Firefox, not me. Okay. Hi. So for... For all the all the promotional assets, every time someone asks me, I need an image. Uh, I would just screenshot this because this um, this is built using CSS. The story of this is that I wanted to use uh, this font. This particular font is a web font, so this is not an image. I can copy and paste it. It's it's, it's searchable text. Um, but color font support is not um, is not supported in Chrome. It's not supported in Safari. It is supported in Edge. So ta-da! Uh, so only Edge and Firefox support this. So what what's gonna happen? But color fonts is one of those uh, properties that falls back well because it's not as if the font won't load. So this is Safari. If it doesn't support color font, it's just going to be black. So the long story short is that all the image editing programs that I could afford uh, did not support color font. So when I wanted to design my uh, banner, whatever, I couldn't get this color font to show up because it only works in the latest, latest, latest edition of Photoshop. And as a fun employed bum, I obviously couldn't afford a subscription. And the pirated version also didn't support this. So in the end, I was like, okay, let's, let's, let's just use the browser to design this. <coughs> so this is the banner that got printed. So how this works is that uh, this, is, this is a trick in case anybody wants to do something as ridiculous as this, right? This is a good use case for viewport units. So how do I get the dimensions correctly? I'm using a Mac, uh, a 13-inch from 2015, so it's 2x density. So if I do 100 VW, when I screenshot the whole thing, the resolution is about 2880. And somehow, the because the, the printer needed it a bit larger, I think it needed, I don't know, 3000 or something. And you'd think, oh, cannot, because that's the maximum I can go. Actually, no, what you can do is but you can go beyond 100. Ah, if you go beyond 100 and you catch a screenshot, right? It goes more than that. This is a this is just an accidental discovery. So you don't you're not limited to 100. That's why right now for this particular thing, right? It's overflowed, which is fine because it's more than the viewport width and more than the viewport height. It overflows. It still works. And if I print screen, because uh, Firefox has this like take screenshot um, function. Okay, so that's it. Bye, everybody. You can go and eat food early. <laughs> yeah, but if you want to do banners, you can do this trick. Okay, thank you. Good night. <laughs>